welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's appraisal buzzcast. We have a great show for you today. Um, today's appraisal buzzcast brought to you by Appraiser e Learning. Let me bring in our host, Hal Humphreys. Hal, welcome. Hi, GM. How you doing this morning? I'm doing absolutely fabulous. Thank, thanks for joining me. Happy to be here. Well, we have a really exciting guest today, Lyle Racky, Senior Director of Co Collateral Policy at Fannie Mae. We, there's been a lot of appraiser talk on the forums and all over the place. And we're excited to get to talk to him and, and hear directly from him what their new selling guide means for appraisers. And I know for a fact that a lot of appraisers are really, really, really interested in this. Um, I try to stay off of Facebook as much as possible. But when you go on there, it's nothing but Fannie Mae all day, every day. Lyle, thank you so much for being here today, sir. Good morning. Um, real quick, I know everybody knows who you are, but how long have you been in this business, Lyle? Uh, I, I first got my appraiser license in 1994. 1994. So you've been a practicing appraiser. You're not some, some guy out there that's just telling appraisers how life is. You've actually done the work. That is true. I appraised in uh, New Mexico for about nine years before I went to work for a bank in their servicing department. Okay. Um, what part of New Mexico? The Albuquerque area. Okay. I love that part of the world. Great, beautiful housing, lots of unique architecture. Yeah. Um, I, I worked out there for the Boy Scouts of America uh, when I got out of high school before I went to college uh, up at Philmont Scout Ranch. So I love that part of the world. All right. So let's just dive right in. Tell us, um, tell us about the March 1 selling guide uh, update and, and valuation modernization announcement. Uh, sure. Uh, so we've been on this uh, this continuous journey of improvement to our home valuation or collateral valuation process for uh, for many years. And uh, one of the things that we have been testing in pilot is something we call property data collection. And uh, after nearly six years in pilot and and uh, many iterations and improvements along the way. Uh, we've decided that it's uh, something that we would like to make available to all of our lenders rather than just the select few and pilot. And so that was the uh, essence of the change. I gotcha. Um, what are some of the acceptable valuation methods um, going forward with this new announcement in, in, in mind? Well, uh, of course, the, the baseline is, and, and but the majority of loans will continue to uh, receive what we call a, a traditional appraisal. W one of the things that we've done with this announcement is uh, we've renamed our appraisal waiver. So, uh, and I think that's caused some of the some of the angst and some of the confusion. We're, we're changing the name of the appraisal waiver to value acceptance uh, to better reflect the actual process uh, of what we do. We use data and technology to accept a lender provided value. And in, in the case of a purchase, that would be the, the contract price on the on the purchase. So the, by renaming it, that's not a new offering and it's not an expansion of, of a, an eligibility box. But uh, the, you know, calling it an appraisal waiver is sort of confusing because it implies some things that that aren't true. Like we're not it, it, it suggests that we're not doing anything like a waiver is, oh, gee, you won't have to do anything. But in fact, we're doing a lot. And, and I think that's really important for uh, risk investors to understand. Right. Um, let's take a real quick break and hear from our first sponsor and we'll come right back and I'll get back into it with Lyle. Since 1978, LIA Administrators and Insurance Services has been offering E&O insurance to valuation professionals. LIA applies superior customer service, exceptional liability education from Peter Christensen and unparalleled claim defense managed by Claudia Gaglioni. LIA offers errors and omissions, commercial bonds, general liability, cyber liability, and real estate agents and brokers E&O. Visit liability.com or call 800-334-0652. Welcome back, everyone. Lyle, um, you know, the, the heart of the, the matter, the question that everybody really wants to know is, what does this mean for appraisers? I know appraisers out there are just freaking out. What does this really mean for appraisers? Yeah, and, and to answer that, I think I need to uh, talk a little bit more about some of the other changes in the announcement. Uh, so, the, like I say, the primary uh, 
new thing in the announcement is what we're calling value acceptance plus property data. So as the name implies, it's value acceptance, which is what we used to call an appraisal waiver, plus an additional thing called property data, which is the thing we've been testing in pilot. Uh, and uh, what we've done is we've taken some of what uh, we used to offer as just a strict value acceptance or appraisal waiver. And we've, we've looked at it and we said with this ca new capability, uh, which loans or which profile would we want to get a little bit more information? And so we've moved some of those appraisal waivers into the property data buckets. We're actually gonna get more information on them than we used to. Uh, but then there were also a set of loans where we said, well, we, we weren't offering appraisal waivers or value acceptance plus uh, because uh, there may have been some issues with the, with the prior appraisal. For example, if the prior appraisal was made subject to completion, well, how do you know it's completed, right? Or if the prior appraisal was done in a, let's say in a coastal Gulf Coast town prior to a hurricane, well, you're like, well, did the hurricane damage the house? So in those situations, we had suppressed appraisal waiver offerings but uh, going forward, we'll be able to offer them uh, in conjunction with the property data because that'll give us a check on whether or not those conditions in the previous appraisal and so forth have been fulfilled. So, uh, you know, on the whole, uh, this will result in uh, fewer value acceptance, uh, but also somewhat fewer appraisals. Both of those changes are very modest. I think for the typical appraiser, you won't see any difference at all. Now. Uh, in terms of property data collection, though, I think this is an opportunity for appraisers because the appraiser skill set is very transferable to that. And, and we would love it if appraisers would, would uh, be willing to take that on as a, as a new business opportunity and, and help us to collect that data. Uh, and I that, think, so, sorry, go ahead. I, I think, you know, for some appraisers, myself included, one of the most fun parts about working in the business is being out looking at properties uh, doing the inspection, seeing what weird things people do with their homes, what cool things people do with their homes. Um, exactly. And if someone is, is, is drawn to that part of the business, it seems like the property data collection could be um, a profit center for them. Potentially, yes. <clears throat> um, I think there's a precedent for that. I mean, if you think back to the late 1990s, Fannie Mae offered a form 2075, where we, we did something quite similar. It was a drive-by rather than an interior, but we had appraisers going out and looking at houses and not providing values in certain cases. So I, I think this is one of those cases of what comes around goes around, right? We, we've, we've been down this journey before, but uh, today is a little different in the sense that we have better technology tools. So that we'll be able to, that, that data can be delivered in a digital format and uh, we can require digital photos. It's just a much more robust process than, let's say, the old 2075. Right. There's there's some concern, um, you know, voiced heavily on the appraisal side about property data collectors, you know, the, the anecdotal Uber drivers out doing this work. Um, what training um, and background checks are property data collectors going to have to do? Uh, well, we do require that uh, the lender that the property data collector, uh, they can use a, a third party a service provider to help them with that vetting, but ultimately the lender is responsible. And uh, that is gonna involve, uh, there is an an, a requirement for an annual background check. There is a requirement, you know, we're looking for, uh, to, for consumer protections to ensure that, you know, to the best degree possible that uh, the people going into homes are, uh, you know, vetted and known and, and are not going to be a, a problem from that perspective. There are a number of other requirements which are spelled out in our selling guide, but uh, in terms of the training, there is a, there's an app that needs to be, I shouldn't say an app, there are many apps. What, what Fannie Mae has done is we have, we have created a property data standard. And the property data standard prescribes exactly what data and what exhibits the lender needs to deliver to us in order to uh, execute one of these property data collection options. And uh, so a, a service provider would need to, you know, read and consume and understand our data standard, and then they would build handheld app 
that a person could take into the home and the, and the app would guide them through the property data collection so that they get all the data elements that we desire and all the exhibits that we desire. Now, some of these apps are uh, also integrated with, you've heard of 3D scan technology, right? And, and some of the same companies who offer 3D scan capabilities are also have also built these apps. And so you can you can wed those together. Uh, so, you know, we we haven't in the selling guide prescribed exactly how the training needs to get done, but the the focus is on being able to execute that property data standard. And, and it, you know, it requires over 100 data elements and it's quite robust. So that suggests that someone's going to need to have uh, a pretty strong understanding of real estate in order to execute the app. Right. Um, and there's some talk about um, training options for people that are going to be property data collectors and, and um, you know, a, a real estate agent may not look at a house the same way an appraiser would. Um, and I think, you know, what you're saying sounds to me like um, you're, we're going to rely on the app and the integration there uh, to guide people through the process so that maybe even if they don't no real estate that well they can follow the app is that is that what i'm hearing well i wouldn't put it that way uh all the parties who've done this in pilot have been real estate professionals of one type or another okay uh, but uh, what i would say is that the the standard is very factual so it's objective factual observations it's not interpretive uh, it's not requiring judgment it's just like tell us what you see take a picture of what you see right? Uh, use factual terms to describe the components of the, of the property. So in, in that sense, I, I think it is pretty universal. Facts are facts. Right. So you're not looking for um, property data collectors to pass judgment on quality and condition and those kind of things. No, just describe what they see. Okay. Okay. Um, can appraisers get into the PDC um, third party inspection game without having to go through a lot of additional training? I think so. Uh, I mean, the, the training requirements are up to the lenders and, you know, their service providers to decide. But of course, in, in terms of the capability of making those subjective observations, I think appraisers are already, uh, generally speaking, very capable. Uh, so it, it mainly be a question of getting familiarity with the app. And, you know, one of the things that, that strikes me is most appraisers at this point um, have been using some kind of a mobile inspection app um, already. Some of them have gotten their head into uh, the various um, data collection, 3D scanning um, technology and stuff like that. I think this would be a really easy transition uh, for appraisers that want to do uh, this kind of work. Yes. Yes. So it's a, it, it's a business opportunity, right? If, if you, you know, like if for, for me, I enjoyed both <clears throat> aspects Raising, I, I enjoy the field work, getting out and, like you say, seeing the variety of housing, uh, getting out in the morning and it, in the bright sunshine and moving around a little bit, getting away from the desk. Uh, but I also enjoy the analytical aspects of, of trying to uh, really figure out the value against the backdrop of uh, what's sometimes very noisy data, right? And, and so I find both of those aspects of the business to be uh, enjoyable. But, you know, if you're someone who likes to specialize in one or the other, this kind of uh, arrangement can help you to specialize. And, uh, you know, Adam Smith, the wealth of nations, he tells us specialization is, is how wealth is built. So, uh, you know, maybe there's something to that. I love it. Well, let's take a quick break and hear from another one of our sponsors. And then Lyle and I will come back and wrap this up. The Appraisal Institute recently launched its Instagram page, AI's latest presence on social media joining Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube and the Face Value podcast. Visit and follow AI's Instagram page for another way to access valuation news and association updates. www.instagram.com slash appraisal institute. Welcome back, everybody. I've got Lyle Radke here with me. I'm Hal Humphreys. You're listening to the Appraisal Buzzcast. Lyle, um, you know, I, I think I know the answer to this. Um, I think it's just unfortunate timing that the interest rates have gone up so much and volume has gone down so much for a lot of appraisers across the country. Um, and then you guys announced this new selling guide thing. There was no nefarious intent there. 
Right. We, uh, we've we been testing this, like I say, for uh, for over five years, and it just happened to come to maturity right now. Uh, we're building for the long term. Uh, so, you know, we're not we're not really this is not in reaction to any short term economic cycle. The, the pain that we're going through right now with interest rates, it's a cycle. If you've been in the business long enough, you've been through these cycles before and, you know, it will pass eventually. Uh, not making any predictions on how long or, or, you know, all that that's up to the federal reserve, obviously, but, uh, people are always going to need housing. Uh, people are always going to want mortgage loans. Uh, this business has got deep roots and, uh, and I think, you know, this too shall pass. And at the end of the day, um, Fannie Mae is not trying to eliminate appraisers. Are you? Absolutely not. Uh, so I, I would say it this way. Congress, in its infinite wisdom, granted the GSEs an, an appraisal exemption in FIREA. So we've never been required, at least since the passage of FIREA, we've never been required to get appraisals. And yet, since 2011, we've obtained more than 60 million appraisals. And if you go back to FIREA, it's probably three times that, right? So a couple hundred million appraisals that we obtained voluntarily. I think that should give appraisers some comfort. The, we use models for a lot of things. We offer alternatives uh, in our collateral risk base, but uh, you know the appraisal is, quite frankly, where that's one of the primary data sources for our models. So, uh, if you don't get appraisals, how do you drive your models? There's, I'll just say it another way: as an appraiser, uh, receiving you know on the receiving end of appraisal orders, I could go through a stack of orders and say. This one is gravy, man. This one's going to be easy. And this one, ooh, that's a challenge, right? And you could kind of uh, sort those orders by the degree of difficulty. There were, there are some appraisal assignments where, quite honestly, we everybody already knows the answer. It's a foregone conclusion before you even start. Uh, and uh, in some of those situations, we just don't need to spend as much time or energy or money on uh, collateral due diligence because the loan parameters are, are very safe, right? Very low risk. Yeah. And I think it's important, two things. Number one, the story, the, the, the concept you just mentioned about sometimes everybody knows the answer. Um, I went to look at a, a condominium, um, up in Clarksville, Tennessee, about a year and a half ago, there were 100 units in this condominium complex. It was new construction. There were 50 corner units and 50 interior units. Um, the sales price for the corner units will say was $170,000 plus or minus five to $600 for the interior units. It was 155 plus or minus a couple hundred bucks. Um, and I literally asked the banker, I'm like, why did you order an appraisal on this? It just seemed like it was one of those things. Like everybody knows the answer. Um, and the data is so clear that there are times when an appraisal is not necessary. Yeah. And, and I would say that this is not a shift in Fannie Mae's strategy. This is not a, a, a major announcement of a, of a new tomorrow. This is just more of what we do, which is risk management. And uh, it, it introduces a new option. But uh, that traditional appraisal is always an option for any borrower who wants to get one. And uh, of course, that's the that's the uh, foundation of, of all that we do here. Yeah. And without appraisals, your data machine stops working. Well, yeah, that's we, we use the appraisal data in our models. Yeah. OK. Um, is there anything else we appraisers need to know about this announcement? Anything else you think we have overlooked or need to think about? Uh, I think we should talk a little bit about hybrid appraisals. So the announcement does mention hybrid appraisals. Uh, this is not a broad launch of hybrid appraisals. It is. Uh, yeah, allowing for hybrid appraisals on an exception basis where a very specific set of uh, preconditions occurred in a certain sequence. So in other words, if a, if a lender is granted the option or given the option of, of doing this value acceptance plus property data, and then they get the property data, and then the borrower comes in and says, you know what, I want to borrow a bunch more money and that loan conditions change. So they're kind of stuck holding this property data collection. And the, and the question is, do you want to send someone else back out to the house? In other words, an appraiser, or uh, have you already collected enough information to do an appraisal? And in some cases, you know, as the selling guide spells out, we think that 
uh, doing the hybrid appraisal in that situation is, is the most efficient path and makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, there's also some mention about alternatives to the 1004 D. Uh, so we will allow appraisers to fulfill a 1004 D using virtual inspection methodologies. And, you know, encourage appraisers to, to uh, read that portion. Uh, and I, I think those are the main uh, components of it. I think, um, you know, we appraisers are out here doing the work of an appraiser. We see one piece of the risk analysis. Um, which is the collateral piece. There's a lot more to risk than collateral. There's credit risk and, and you know, this is a modernization. I, I don't have the feeling that this is going to be a massive change for appraisers. Um, I know a lot of appraisers out there are absolutely freaked out and terrified by it, but I'm not convinced that this is going to be a massive sea change for the appraisal industry. Here's the thing, guys, as Lyle said earlier, um, if you've been in this industry for more than a minute, you've seen it go up and you've seen it go down. Um, and there's work on both sides of that curve for real estate appraisers. Um, Lyle, thank you so much for being here today. I can't, I mean, I literally can't thank you enough. I know you're crazy busy answering questions across the spectrum from appraisers who are terrified. Um, thank you for being here. Now, tomorrow, you're going to be on the appraisal report webinar with Brian Reynolds. And I'm of the understanding you're going to be talking to Brian and Ham Thomas, who has a video that's gone a little bit viral out there. Are you ready for that? Well, uh, that's, that's a <laughs> tough crowd to, to uh, compete with, but uh, that'll be fun. And, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, talk through some of the clarify some of the, uh, uh, misunderstandings around that announcement tomorrow. So again, thank you for inviting me today and I really appreciate the opportunity to share our story and uh, happy to come back next time when you have more questions. Very good, Lyle. Thank you so much. Um, Jim Morrison is back in the room. Jim, thank you for lining this up. I know uh, you and Lyle have had a, a long relationship. I've known Lyle for several years now and have always enjoyed spending time with you, Lyle. Um, you know, here's the thing. For the appraisers out there, um, take a breath, realize that there are other ways to make money. Not everything is, is an attempt to get rid of appraisers. Um, I believe, and this is just me talking, I believe that, you know, there's still going to be a lot of work for residential real estate appraisers out there, even in the mortgage lending world. Um, as Lyle was saying, it's still, they're going to be fewer waivers offered. There may be a few fewer appraisals ordered, but at the end of the day, the appraisal is the, it's a gold standard evaluation. Um, and Lyle I'm kind of going off script here, but at the end of the day, capital markets and, and secondary uh, markets, a lot of times they want to see a set of eyes on the property. Do they not? That is true. So, uh, you know, uh, Fannie Mae is in business and we need to be able to sell our, uh, our securitize our mortgages. And, and, uh, so we are very sensitive to investor requirements, to mortgage insurers, uh, and their requirements, their important risk partners of ours. And so, yeah, that's, that's all part of the, uh, calculus here. Okay. Jim, man, uh, good show. Thanks for, thanks for setting this one up. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I, Lyle, that was great information. I know appraisers are going to want to hear it. Any of our listeners that are listening to this the day that it comes out, um, tomorrow, March 23rd at 10 a.m. Central, there's going to be an appraiser uh, report webinar with Lyle. So you're going to want to rush over that and check that out. We'll put the link in our um, post so that you can sign up for that ahead of time. Um, but we're really looking forward to it. And you'll have a chance to talk to Lyle and ask him questions yourself. So uh, we really appreciate your time, Lyle. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Hal. Thank you. Jim Morrison, I, I know this is going to be um, an interesting uh, few weeks for appraisers dealing with this new announcement. Um, you know, Brian Reynolds and I were talking last week about, you know, when ANSI was announced and a lot of appraisers said, this is the end of the world. And and you know what? It's it's really not that big a deal. Um, so I, I can't thank you enough for lining up Lyle to be here. He's always fun to talk to. Um, and what else do we have for today? 
Um, we need some more anonymous appraiser questions. So if you have any questions you want to ask from our panel, uh, reach out to us at comments at appraisalbuzz.com and ask anything that you want to ask and we'll get the answer to you. And along those lines, you know, if you watch this podcast on YouTube or if you listen to it uh, on your, your streaming service, do not hesitate to reach out uh, to me or Jim or just the, the, the podcast channel in general with questions or comments. We covet those um, and we can include those questions and comments um, with the Brian Reynolds uh, webinar uh, tomorrow and maybe get some of your, your, your questions in there and be able to get some things sussed out with appraisers. Well, thanks so much, Hal. Really appreciate it. And thanks for our sponsors and listeners for joining us. For Jim Morrison and Lyle Radke, I'm Hal Humphreys, and that is your Appraisal Buzzcast. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.